This is 5 Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to use the Power Apps Test Framework. And what that does is it'll actually automate tests through your Canvas apps, like this one you see running here. And it'll run through all of the steps to execute that test, and then it'll report out the results at the end. In this case, it's going to execute a flow to, um, to report all the results, and I have those going to Teams. So it'll run itself, report out to Teams how well it did passing all of its tests. So the app we're going to use for this is, a, uh, is an app I built in a previous video, and I'll put the link to it here. But what it does is it takes this form I made up. This is a 1957 tweet request form, and it's got four fields on it here. And I built a model-driven app on top of this, and that's this form here. And so all of those get posted here via a Canvas app. And the way the Canvas app works is you select a, a document to analyze or a form to analyze or take a picture on a mobile device, and then what it does is the AI from AI Builder will extract the text out of there. And then once it's done, click Review Data. And then you'll see it pulled out the data and it submits it to the model-driven app. So that's a way of ingesting new forms. And so you can see how that's built from scratch. But what we're going to do is we're going to add, use the uh, test framework to automate testing on top of this. So we'll start here right from the edit screen. And the first thing we need to do before we work on the test is we need to actually set one of the advanced settings one of the, well, that's currently experimental. So come in here to settings, go into advanced settings, and we'll turn on formula level error management. Now back here then, under the advanced tools, we'll open up tests, that'll open up the test panel, and we're gonna start by recording a test against the app. So we'll just do the same demo I did, but we'll record it. So at the top here, I'll click record. It's gonna load up the uh, Canvas app here in the panel, and we'll run through those same tests. So I'll click analyze. We'll take one of these forms, load it up here, the AI will run and extract the data. I'll click Review Data. You can see the data is pulled out. I'll click Submit. Click Done. And we'll see that it only captured two of those steps, the buttons. And part of the reason is, is not everything can be recorded at this time. Like this uh, AI Builder component here is, is written using the Power Apps Component Framework, or PCF. PCF cannot yet be captured or, or tracked uh, via the recording. And so we're going to add in some steps to uh, address this using our automation. So the first thing is, is this AI Builder control I've set so that on the on change, what it does, it takes all the data that comes from AI Builder and it sets it in this variable here, var current form. Now since we can't use AI Builder using the testing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set var current form directly using our automation. We're gonna mock the data. And then that way that part will be done and we can use the automation for testing the remainder of the app. And so we need to know what var current form looks like. And if we look in here in our variables, we see we have var current form and we can open it up and we see the data. And so we need to know the structure of this data. And so what we'll do is we'll insert a label here. And this is just temporary. And we're gonna take the JSON structure of that, uh, that collection and write it out here. So we'll just do a button here. And again, this is temporary. And we're gonna set the button to create a new variable, var JSON. And that's going to be the JSON structure for that, that collection var current form. And so I'll hit the Alt button, click the button, and that's going to set this variable var JSON to be the JSON structure of current form. So let's take var JSON, we'll just show it here in this label, and now we have the JSON structure for that, for that collection. So I'm going to copy that out here. Now let's talk about uh, what, what, what we're seeing here. And so it looks basically like this. And now we'll notice here, everything is in double quotes. Now when we actually apply this with the set statement, we actually need the names here in double quote, the field names to be single quotes. So I'm gonna make that change. And then also the data here, we wanna, we wanna be able to read that data and validate or assert that we got the right value in there. So we're gonna set those to known values and kind of more generic values. And so I'm gonna make both of those changes when I paste this JSON in to our test. So we'll copy this to the clipboard. And then we'll delete both of these temporary controls. Uh, label one. And then back in our test, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, insert a step above this one. And that's going to set that variable of our current form, the same one we're using, to that JSON structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the modified JSON structure like we just described in here. And we'll see we've got single quote field names and then defined uh, to find uh, field, da field data as well. There we go. And so now that's gonna uh, bypass the AI Builder steps and allow us to do the remaining of the test. So this is gonna set then the button review 
And then we're going to do some assertions. And so I'm going to insert a step above. I'm going to insert, uh, set an assert step. Now assert is basically going to say this data or this field or this property should have this value. So in this case, we're going to verify that the tweet uh, data card, the default value equals the value that we set in our uh, up here, which is test tweet message. So we're going to verify that that equals test tweet message. And if we're also going to log this then, so if we need to log this out with assert tweet message, and then we'll put actual value, and then we'll take the tweet data card again, and we'll just put the default. So then we'll say, we're asserting that, and here's what the actual value was. Now we'd really do these for all the fields. Let's just do one more. Um, and so we're going to assert also the first name field. So let's do first name data card, default, and that's going to equal, uh, what do we set it to here? Test F name. And you notice the expressions we're using are the same ones you would use in your Canvas app. And so then we'll do assert first name actual. And then we'll set it to the first name data card default value. And we'll show that out then in any uh, reporting that we do. And let's update these descriptions too. So let's assert tweet message. And we'll also, we're here, we're asserting first name. So now we bypass the AI builder. We're setting our mock data here. And then we click the button. We do a couple of assertions on the form and then we submit the form. So let's do a quick test on this first. So we'll save this and we'll play it. And when you play it, it's gonna publish your app. So if your app is not ready for prime time, then that's the limitation of this. You may wanna consider having a separate version for test and then some sort of publishing or copy cycle into, into production. And that's something that, you know, I think is probably part of its experimental nature. So here we're setting the mock data and then we're gonna click the button. And we see that our, because we set that var current form, it populated the form for us. It's checking the values for the tweet message in the first name and submits the form. And now all this submitted to a model driven app. And if we refresh here, we see here we got the tweet message posted just now. So those steps work. So let's come back into here and let's do a couple of other assertions on this. Let's also check to make sure that the form is successfully submitted. So we do submit form and then let's add another one, another assertion here. And so we're going to uh, assert form submitted. So we're going to assert that it has an empty errors collection. So assert is blank and then form tweet form error. And so that'll, if there's any errors, then we're going to stop here and we're going to be able to read out the errors. And then the last thing too, is we want to make sure that we end on that success stream. So we'll a success screen. And so we'll say assert success screen. And then we'll assert that the app active screen app active screen name equals success. Now, if you rename the screen or if you rename any of these buttons here, uh, this won't detect that. And so you need to make sure you keep the names uh, in sync. It won't automatically update them like it will while you're working on your Canvas app. And so then we'll just do uh, uh, assert our active screen is, and we'll just add the uh, app active screen name. So now let's test this again. So we'll click play. It's going to publish our app. And so we'll see here, it's adding our mock data, bypassing AI builder, it submits the form. We see our values there, it does the assertion to make sure those are correct. It's going to submit it. It's going to make sure the submit form was submitted without errors. And then we're on the success screen and then it's done. Let's add a description for this one's duplicated. Let's get rid of that. So now let's see if we can trigger some of those assertions as well. And so we can do that by changing some of the screen, the text it's looking for. Like if we take the tweet message, we'll put some X's in there and the first name, the two things that it's looking for. Let's just do the, uh, the tweet message. So we'll save this, publish it, and let's try running it again. So this time the tweet message should be different than it's testing in the assertion, and so it should fail.
So it's setting the mock data. We see here that the tweet text is different than we're expecting. It's asserting against it and see it failed. It says actual text message is there. So that's good. So that worked as expected. Now let's move, remove that assertion on the tweet message because there's another uh, condition on this model driven on the CDS uh, entity. The tweet message is a required field. And so if we remove the tweet message, we should fail and we should not be able to submit the form. So let's check that the form submitted assertion is also working. So we'll save this again. And then we'll publish and play. So now it's playing, it's going to set the mock data, but there's going to be no tweet uh, text in there. So this is blank, it's required field. We can see the validation kick in on the app itself. Now when it tries to submit the form, we see the assert failed because we have errors in the, uh, you know, on the form. And so that stops that assertion. So let's move this back so the way it was. Let's set our tweet text to uh, the value it's expecting here in the assertion. And now let's hook up the final thing. Let's go uh, to the test here. And there's this property on test case complete where we could run some other code or connection or flow. I have a flow that I built that takes uh, the results of the test and then puts them, posts them to a, a Teams, uh, Teams channel. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the name of this here, test results to Teams in the on test case complete. And we're gonna dot run. Now one thing you'll notice is it's not recognizing this. And so one thing I found is that you actually have to have that flow referenced in the Canvas app, app itself in order to get it recognized in the test. And so this could be as simple as just adding a button in here temporarily and then going into Power Automate and test results to Teams is our uh, flow that we're using. And so I'll just pop that in here. And then I'll just put some quotes in there for its empty parameter. And now when I come back in to the test automation, you see test results of teams is now recognized. So I found I had to do that. And then what we're going to feed this in as a parameter then is the JSON of the test case result. And so now if we save this and we can come back to the canvas app, we can delete that button. It just has to be in there when we add it, but everything should run after that. And now let's play this again and publish it. And this should run again and we should get our results posted to this teams channel here. So again, it's submitting the mock data, clicked on the button review. It's going to assert that the first name is set. It's going to verify that the form was successfully submitted by looking at the form's error collection. It's verifying that we're on the success screen and then it ran the on test case complete. And so if we come back here, we should see, here's our test run just now. It says that it passed and it also logged some of the asserts here as well. And so that all came from this flow here that actually took that test case results JSON, created an adaptive card out of it, and then posted that to Teams. I'm not going to go over how to create this, but I, will, I am going to post the JSON for this flow on GitHub, and it'll be in the description for this video if you want to see more about it. So I hope this was useful to you. I wanted to play around with this new experimental feature, and I think this is a great sign of what's to come for the Power Platform as far as the ability to really build uh, strong automation around all of the apps, not just for the robotic process automation and UI flows, but also the typical software development lifecycle of automating QA and such. Thanks for watching.